good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're joining us from the world. Um, my name is Jason Senga. On behalf of TA Instruments, I'd like to welcome you. Thank you for joining us for this, this exciting uh, uh, application and products webinar. Today's speaker is Dr. Heng Wang. Heng earned his master's and PhD in materials physics uh, from the Chinese Academy of Sciences. During that time, along with some time that he spent with the National Metrology Institute of Japan, Heng worked to develop and improve thermophysical properties, um, measurement methods, and equipment, including laser flash, thermal diffusivity, and dilatometry. Within the product management group uh, currently here at TA Instruments, he works to help define, develop uh, thermophysical analysis products and, and provide technical support to both our internal and external customers. Today's webinar is going to discuss uh, steady state light flash methods for thermal diffusivity and thermal conductivity measurements. Uh, during this webinar, you can submit questions uh, to a section uh, in, on your screen, the, the Q&A section. Um, and then after the talk, we will try to uh, answer as many of those as we can. Uh, if not, we will, we will certainly um, uh, make sure to reach out to you and so um, make sure to, to submit as many questions as, you, as you'd like, and we'll, we'll address them either in the session or, after, or a afterwards via email. Um, with that, I'm going to hand it off to Heng. Uh, Heng, the stage is yours. Thank you, Jason. Hello, everyone. Good morning, afternoon, and evening. My name is Heng Wang. Welcome to this webinar. I will talk about steady state in a light flash method for measuring thermal diffusivity and uh, thermal conductivity. Let me turn off my video camera so we will focus on the slide we just showed. For each method, we'll go through the principle, instrumentation, and application. Let's start from the fundamentals, concepts of thermal diffusivity and the thermal conductivity. Why is it important to know these uh, properties? How are they related to our daily practices in the, the real world? The governing role in measuring understanding thermal conductivity and handling the Heat transfer management is a Fourier law. Joseph Fourier law was a great French mathematician and a physicist in the 17th and 18th centuries. He defined thermal conductivity in a very simple but a beautiful way. Thermal conductivity is the amount of heat going through an object per unit of time, per unit cross area, per unit of temperature gradient. About 200 years ago, Joseph Fourier, as you see, artistically emphasized the importance of the heat conductivity in sciences and in industries, saying the action of the heat is always present. It penetrates all bodies and spaces. It influences the process of the art and occurs in all the phenomena of the universe. Now, let's resonate with Joseph Flory to understand his transfer more and more with the progress of sciences and industries. Specifically, according to Flory heat conduction equation, given a thermal conductivity, we can know the temperature distribution and the heat flow within an object that are critical to all applications. In his transfer analysis, thermal diffusivity is a thermal conductivity divided by density in a specific heat. It was originally introduced in the differential heat conduction equation at the transient status in which the temperature is not constant at a given position. Thermal diffusivity is the measure of the thermal inertia Within a material with a high thermal diffusivity, heat moves rapidly through it. 
because the material conducts the heat quickly relative to its heat capacity or thermal mass. Thermal diffusivity is often measured with flash method in which thermal conductivity can be derived along with specific heat and density. The specific heat can be measured by using flux comparative method or the method like DIC. There is a wide range in the thermal conductivities of various engineering materials that are caused by different atom, molecule, electronic structures, temperature-dependent interactions of phonons and electrons, composition and formulation, and presetting condition. Accurate measurement of thermal conductivity will help us to understand and predict the processing characteristics, physical nature, product performance, optimistic thermal management, safety and longevity of a system and the components. What is the difference between the steady state method and the transient flash diffusivity method? Which method should we choose? Let us have a look at this comparable table to have a sense. First, the mathematical basis is different. In the steady state method, thermal conductivity is directly involved so that it can be determined directly and the time variable is not involved. This gives the steady state method the advantage for measuring heterogeneous materials with low and medium conductivity. The effective thermal conductivity can be determined with the temperature drop across the sample. By the contrast, in the transient flash method, thermal diffusivity rather than thermal conductivity is involved, and the time is a variable in the equation. Second, the boundary conditions that are associated with the heat loss are different. In the steady state method, it is required to be constant versus time. In the contrast, for the laser flash diffusivity method, it's a change versus time. Third, the temperature distribution is stationary versus time at all position and varies various position in the steady state method. But the temperature distribution varies versus time and position in the flash diffusivity method. Fourth, the measured quantities in the steady state method are heat flow, which is determined either by absolute measurement or calibration. The cross area in the thickness of the sample and the temperatures on the sample surfaces. In the case of measuring high thermal conductivity materials, the tailing magnitude of temperature drop across the sample will cause the measurement error dramatically. The diffusivity difficulty at high temperature will make uh, the measurement extremely difficult. In the contrast uh, for the transient flash diffusivity method, temperature change signal versus the time of the surface of a small sample is recorded in a very short time for calculating thermal diffusivity. It benefits the wide range of thermal conductivity measurement in the broad temperature range. This graphic illustrates the thermal diffusivity in thermal conductivity measuring units from TA instruments versus the thermal conductivity in the temperature measurement ranges. False heat flow meter are used to measure insulating materials. In this webinar, we focus on the DTC 300 and false 50 and the light flash thermal diffusivity instruments. The DTC 300 guarded heat flow meter and the Fox 50 heat flow meter are used for low and medium thermal conductivity measurement below 300 degrees C. Discover light flash instrument are used for the wider measurement range above 0.1 volts per kilometer Kelvin from minus 100 
75 degrees C to 2800 degrees C. Now let's make a quick overview of the steady state thermal conductivity meters and the light flash diffusivity instruments and their application then we'll go on the elaboration. For steady state method, first direct thermal conductivity measurement is highly reliable for polymer and composites. Second, it's ideal for the materials that are difficult to measure using flux diffusivity method, heterogeneous composite, transparent and translucent, porous material, etc. Third, it is flexible to test the wide variety of polymers, glasses, ceramics, and carbon composites, including paste, liquids, thin film, and polymers to melt. For flash, Thermal diffusivity method, first it can be measured a broadest material from low to mediate to high conductivity. Second, it covers the widest thermal uh, sample temperature range from minus 175 degrees C through 2800 degrees C. Third, multiple outer, outer samplers provide a high throughput in accurate specific heat measurement for all models. Fourth, Special sample holder make testing material in different sectors possible, such as liquid powder, implant, laminate sheet, and a mountain metal. So we are going to talk about a steady state method, gala heat flow meter, DTC 300, and a heat flow Fox 50 in their application first. FOSS50 is in accordance with ASTM C518 standard. The plate temperature range is from minus 10 to 110 degrees C and can be extended to 190 degrees C with the high temperature model. The sample size is 50 millimeter to 60 millimeter in diameter with the thickness up to 25 millimeter. The measurement range can be defined precisely with thermal resistance, which is the sample thickness divided by thermal conductivity. The thermal resistance measurement range is from 0.003 to 0.05 meter square Kelvin per volt. DTC 300 complies to ASTM E1530 covering the sample temperature range from minus 20 to 300 degrees C. The sample size is 50 millimeter in diameter with the thickness up to 25 millimeter. With the three interchangeable perimeter stacks, a thermal resistance from 0.0005 to 0.05 meter square Kelvin per volt is covered. With the sample holders, Paste the liquid powder in the polymer soup mount can be measured. The principle of the force 50 is very straightforward. The two heat flow transducers are employed in upper and the lower plates and calibrated with the reference sample so that the thermal conductivity of the well-known unknown sample can be calculated with the heat flux obtained by the transducers. By the contrast, the, the DTC 300 employs multiple trans reference samples with different thermal resistance for the calibration to reduce the effect of the interfacial thermal resistance of the samples with the instrument place to the measurement. Let's see how the DTC 300 works. I'll show you the schematic of DTC 300 on the left. Three temperature reading of the plate surfaces getting involved on calibration with the reference samples and a calculation on unknown sample. The temperature of the up and the lower plate that is sandwiched the sample 
and the temperature of the bottom heat plate. According to free law, a linear correlation exists between the thermal resistance of the sample and the ratio of the temperature drop across the sample over that of the calorimeter, as shown in the equation on the right. Running the calibrations with several reference samples of different thermal resistance, for instance, five reference samples of A, B, C, D, E are shown here, will generate a fitted linear calibration line in the coordinate with the temperature drop ratio as the horizontal axis and the sample thermal resistance as the vertical axis. When measuring in unknown sample, projecting the point in the calibration line that corresponds to the major ratio of temperature drop to the sample thermal resistance axis, that is the vertical axis, will get a thermal resistance of the unknown sample. Thus, thermal conductivity at a given thickness. All the analysis is done automatically with the software. This graph makes a comparison between the Fox 50 and DCC 300 in temperature range of the thermal resistance in an temperature. Depending on where you, our sample is located, we can choose either Fox 50 or DTC 300 for our applications. The TTC, DTC 300 is beyond the limits of a Fox 50 due to the standard to comply to and uh, design fe features as well. The performance of uh, any measurement instrument are supposed to be verified with reference sample. <clears throat> Vice pair SP1 is well defined polymer material that has been used widely as a reference sample in polymer category. So here it's about the measurement result on the Westfall SP1 sample with the DTC 300. <clears throat> we can see the result is in excellent agreement with the literature value within 0.8% for all the temperature point. As shown in this picture, the DTC 300 and 450 has been used to measure many submaterials, such as polymer, rubber, brick, glass, wood, paste, thin, plastic sheet, etc. Regarding measurement of thin sample of these thermal resistances out of the measurement range, Multiple layer analysis can be used by stacking several layers of thin samples for multiple runs. Then the thermal conductivity is a receptacle of the slope of the fitted linear relation of the thermal resistance versus the thickness obtained in each run. When needed, a reference sample can be further inserted below the stack of samples to increase the total resistance for the measurement to be inside the calibration range of the instrument. Now let's look at a couple application example by using Fox 50 and DTC 300. First one is about the measurement of anisotropic laminate compo com composite with Fox 50. And also tropic material have found many applications for thermal management. And both in-plane and through-plane thermal conductivity data must be known. The through-plane thermal conductivity measurement can be easily performed, but the in-plane measurement can now be done simply machining a single piece of sample because its cross area perpendicular to the measurement direction is much smaller than the size required by instrument. In this case, the laminated sheet was cut into strips at an identical width. Then the strips uh, were flipped 90 degrees and combined with a small amount of the glue 
and the wrong sample was obtained by machining. The result indicates that the implant thermal conductivity is about three times higher than the through plane thermal conductivity. That is exactly designed to be. Second one is about the measurement on thermal thermally conductive compound with the DTC300. This compound is formulation with advanced silicon fluid that interacts with the thermally conductive failure particles to form a highly stable matrix that helps to prevent a pump out and other common failure mechanisms in electronic industry. The high thermal conductivity of thermal compound makes it ideal for a re variety of application where the heat must be dissipated across a varying boundary line. The accurate thermal conductivity measurement of the compound is critical for product quality. In this test, the paste cell was used and calibrated first. The thermal resist resistance of the compound with the cell is the middle of the calibration ring, which ensured the accuracy of the measurement. Now let's move on the flash diffusivity method, instruments, and application. In 1959, William Parker and the co-work colleagues at the National Radiological Defense Lab developed a flash method to measure thermal diffusivity, specific heat in thermal conductivity. They developed a deposit a xenon flash energy shorter than one millisecond on the front surface of the, a disk sample and detected the temperature rise history at a real sample surface. Thermal diffusivity can be calculated with the half time, which is the time for the real surface to reach half a maximum temperature, according to this formula famous Park equation. Park derived this equation by himself based on the differential heat conduction equation, but found shortly it existed already in a classical book named Conduction of Heat in Solids by Caslow and G. Agar. Also, Park. Park Parker was a little disappointed in having to replace his beautiful derivation by a reference to this book. His name is a household word in circle dealing with the flash diffusivity method due to his group developing this breakthrough technique for measurements of the broadest material in the widest temperature range. Parks equation assume adiabatic boundary condition, i.e. no heat loss, and an instantaneous flash pulse that are not practical with the real physical limitations. Therefore, many models have been developed to make the heat loss correction, and almost mean models have been included in our flash line software. All all our flash diffusivity instruments have the function of mapping real time of the flash pulse for the final pulse time effect correction. Now move on the specific heat measurement by flash comparative method. Q in the equations for the reference sample in the unknown sample are the flash energy deposited on these samples. Counseling Q out to combine the two equations gives the equation on the bottom to calculate the specific heat of an unknown sample. The accurate specific heat measurement required the, the same laser power, same thermal environment, 
in identical surface condition for both reference and unknown samples. The best solution is applying laser power on reference unknown samples without any delay and having reference in unknown sample located side by side in single test. In addition, it's ideal for reference sample in unknown samples to have a similar thermal energy to reduce the effect of heat loss on the measurement accuracy. Also, the heat loss have been accounted for. The multiple sample configuration allows for reliable specific, specific heat measurement than any other single sample system. The flash source can be either laser or xenon, depending on the sample in the temperature. What are the main differences between them? Laser is infrared, monochromatic, and collimated, while xenon light is diffused with broad light spectrum. So for xenon flash diffusivity system, we developed a patented waveguide light pipe technique to collect in a col collimated xenon source flash, delivering xenon flash energy directly to the sample surface. The light pipe has a temperature limitation of 900 degrees C. Therefore, the laser flash, the diffusivity system are needed at a higher temperature than 900 degrees C. And the laser flash systems also benefit the application of measuring very thick samples of low conductivity and the low surface emissivity due to its higher power. Here's about the main specs in the major configuration of flash diffusivity systems. As you can see, the entire temperature range of uh, minus 175 degrees C through 2800 degrees C is covered. Auto samplers are the standard configuration for all models, and the special holders are available for material in different settings and shapes, such as liquid paste power, powder, implant for thin film, laminar sheet, mountain metal, etc. We are excited to introduce the new DXF200 Plus that was uh, launched in this uh, September with uh, this unique uh, pin contact detector, largest uh, flash energy up to 15 joules. It's the only flash uh, system uh, capable to tr truly measuring thermal diffusivity down to minus 175 degrees C. It's a powerful tool in the application of aerospace, electronics, and energy storage. So why should the pin contact detector over MCT, which, is a, 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 which stands for mercury calcium telluride infrared detector at a cryogenic temperature? This is the comparison of the raw thermogram signal generated by the pin contact detector at a minus 175 degrees C with that by the MCT at a minus 80 degrees C on the same copper sample in the thickness of five millimeter. The signal to knowledge ratio of the thermogram at a Minus 175 degrees C by the pin contact detector is even eight times better than that at minus 80 degrees C by the MCT infrared detector. The ratio of signal to noise of thermogram at minus 80 degrees C by the MCT detector in this case is about just uh, two, that's not acceptable for real uh, reliable result. Due to the difficulty to measure thermal conductivity in uh, thermal diffusivity at cryogenic temperatures, particularly below 
minus of 100 C, there may be some approaches uh, to obtain the data by extrapolating the data points at a high temperature points to the lower temperature. However, it will cause a significant error because thermal conductivity and thermal diffusivity can vary quicker, strongly depending on the impurity in the structure changes at a cryogenic temperature. On the left is an example of the copper. The lower the temperature, the more scattered the thermal diffusivity and thermal conductivity due to slightly change in purity. Thermal conductivity data of the copper at a minus 173 degrees C can range from 420 to 520, uh, 500 volts per Kelvin meter, as shown left. Also, there is no significant change at a minus 70 degrees C. Thus, the actual measurement at a cryogenic temperature range are required for the safety in engineering application. As always, we run the reference sample to verify the performance of any measurement instrument. This is the result of Cine Steel 304L obtained with the DX700 Plus. The result is an excellent agreement with the reference data within 2.9% at all temperature points. The stainless steel material is widely used as various components in aerospace air in aeronautics industries. These are the results of the measurements on a pure copper reference sample by both the DXF200 plus and DXF900. The results have very good agreement with each other in the overlapping temperature range. And all measurements fall within one and a half percent of the reference values. Now, let's talk about but the performance of a high temperature laser flash system, DLF 1600. This is about the measurement of three thermograph reference sample in three different thickness up to about 10 millimeter in a single test from room temperature to 1600 degrees C. The excellent agreement of the result regardless of the thickness and a clean thermogram of the 10 millimeter thick sample at a 1600 degree C display the excellence of the DL level 1600. First, the furnace temperature is stable even for long measurement of time up to over 10 seconds. Second, no disturbance is observed in thermogram, meaning fresh gas flow was uniform even at a maximum temperature of 1600 degree C. Third, the Mathematical model for calculation of thermal diffusivity has been taken care of the lateral heat loss very well. As I mentioned earlier, the steady state method DTC300 and FOSS50 are easy to use tools for polymer material due to the direct measurement of thermal conductivity. In the case of obtaining accurate specific heat and density data as a function of the temperature, the flash method can perform perfect measurements of the polymer material as well. Here are the testing results on Westpal SP1 with the flash method. The thermal conductivity data is calculated as a product of the thermal diffusivity measured in specific heat obtained by DIC method. The density as a function of the temperature based on thermal expansion data by datatometry. As can be seen, the thermal conductivity result derived from measured thermal diffusivity, specific heat and density are all in very good agreement with the recommended value within 2.1% at all temperature points.
The accurate measurement of thermal conductivity by flash method at a high temperature requires the accurate data of the all involved per, uh, properties of the thermal diffusivity, specific heat, and density as a function of the temperature. The density data is based on thermal expansion as a function of the temperature. Conventionally, three samples in different sizes or shapes from the same material are required by flux diffusivity machine for thermal diffusivity, DIC for specific heat, and push out the dilatometry for expansion, i.e. density. This causes additional temperature, uh, additional time and material consumption when preparing samples particular in prototype stage that the sample is not available in large size. Pairing the flash diffusivity instrument in optical non-contact dilatometer DLF-806 from T instruments makes it possible to obtain the multiple thermal physical property, thermal diffusivity, specific heat expansion to derive accurate thermal conductivity with just uh, one single disk sample. Here's an example of using both DL level, DL level 1600 and DL level 806 to obtain all these thermal physical properties on one single disk or ceramic sample up to 1300 degrees C. The specific heat data was obtained with the reference few al alumina sample side by side with the, the unknown ceramic sample in the same test. Graphite materials have been used across a wide range of industry, such as environmental and energy, electronics, metallurgical and aerospace, et cetera. Their basic applications include industrial furnaces and after high temperature heaters. In order to identify the performance of a heat distribution and a thermal shock resistance, the evaluation of thermal diffusivity on each graphite product and a statistical study on uniformity of lot to lot, block to block, route to route, and piece to piece variation are very important for both fabrication research and quality control. These graphics show the measurement performed by the DLF 2800 on the isotropic graphite materials of six samples from two different lots in a single test, covering the entire temperature range from room temperature to 2800 degrees C, thanks to the high precision and accuracy of uh, the DLF 2800 and uh, the single difference, uh, so slight difference, uh, even just uh, one or two percent among these samples can be distinguished. With these special holders showing this picture, the flux diffusivity measurement can be extended to the materials in different status, such as liquid paste powder, implant direction of the thin film, and laminate sheet, even mountain metal alloy. In metal production, metals are first melted in the undergo different forming processes, such as casting and then continuous casting. In current industry pr practice, simulation are very helpful to cut costs and uh, waste by modeling of uh, casting, melting, and remelting processes. Heat transfer, heat treatment, welding, forging, rolling, etc. A key limitation to the successful introduction of the models is a lack of the thermal diffusivity and the conductivity data. In this test, the copper sample was held in a liquid metal cell that is cons consists of the sapphire lead, 
in the bottom of windows, a Z uh, zirconia spacer and a graphite holder. As I shown in the thermogram at 1200 degrees C after melting, no convection current existed in the typical flash shot displaying excellence performance of DLF 1600 and a smart design designed sapphire liquid metal cell. The thermal diffusivity result of the mountain copper sample are in very good agreement with the data in the literature within the claim on sanity. As you can see, the temperature range after melting in increase in thermal diffusivity with the rising temperature is detected, confirming the same finding in the literature. As I mentioned earlier, really, in the section of DTC 300 in the false 50, the implant thermal conductivity measurement of an anisotropic laminate sheet can be measured with, by some preparation. Similarly, it can be done in the flash diffusivity instrument with the laminate holder. Shown here, the verification test on laminated vice pile pieces was carried out displaying no flash through between adjacent pieces in the leading to the accurate result. The accurate measurement of thermal conductivity and the thermal diffusivity of the thin film along in-play direction is very important to thermal management in many fields of uh, electronics, batteries, etc. We have developed a con concentric implant film model and a sample fixture for implant thermal diffusivity measurement. The flash energy is saved by mask one inserted in front of a sample and deposited on the donut portion of the front surface of the sample. And the heat on the sample flows concentrically inward the center of the sample. The mask tube between the infrared detector and the sample confines the view spot on which the infrared detector recalls the temperature's rising signal. Here are the measurements result on copper thin sample in different thicknesses from uh, 25 microns to half millimeter, of which all the results agree with the, the reference data perfectly, proving the vali validity of the model in a sample fixture. And also tropic graphite has unique uh, property of a high in-plane thermal conductivity and low through-plane thermal conductivity that makes it ideally suited for heat spreading and shielding application in thin handheld electronics like cell phone and uh, tablet computers. The ratio of the in-plane to through-plane thermal conductivity can reach as high as 500 to one and even more. This graphite heat spreader can be used to lower the temperature of the hard components, evenly distribute the surface temperature of a device, and shield the sensitive components from hot spots to increase device lifetime. So the graph shown here is about the measurement results of the 35 micron thick graphite heat spreader sample. The implant thermal diffusivity value at room temperature is uh, about 916 millimeters square per second, which is about eight times higher than that of the pure copper, showing an excellent performance of the implant heat dissipation. There is a strong temperature dependence of the implant thermal diffusivity, which shows dra dramatically a decrease with the increasing temperature. 
this may explain many people's personal experience that our cell phone may just shut down in hard environments. The powder by the metal additive manufacturer AM have been very hard research area in recent uh, recent years that utilize a high energy heat source such as laser scanning at the surface of the powder layer in a predefined area to be melted and solidified to fabricate part layer by layer. AM is the primary uh, thermal process in the further heat conduction is a dominant heat transfer model in the process. So this picture on the right bottom shows the titanium alloy 64 powder sample in the powder cell after testing up to 15 degrees, 1500 degrees C by DLF 1600. Thermal conductivity calculated with the thermal diffusivity result obtained from this test is, is consistent with uh, the result obtained by a joint research group uh, in University of uh, Louisville in National Institute of Standard and Technology. Now let's have a look at uh, their approach. This group built a thin hollow disk with the internal cone featured on the top and the bottom side by the laser powder by the fusion precise in an encapsulated metal powder during the fabrication to prevent a large air gap caused by powder siding. Thermal conductivity was obtained by applying their own de development numerical heat transfer simulation. Now I'm ending with my talk with a summary. With the advantage of a direct thermoconducting measurement, the steady state method in the instruments are ideal for the moderate in the low conductivity materials in the low temperature range. They are favorable too for heterogeneous composite, transparent and translucent in porous materials, etc. Measurement scope can be extended to non-solid samples with a special holder. Flush the thermal diffusivity instrument are powerful tools for great varieties of materials in widest temperature range from minus 175 degrees C to 2800 degrees C. Multiple auto samplers provide a high throughput in accurate specific heat measurement. Special sample holder makes the testing materials in different styles possible, such so liquid powder, implant, laminate sheet, and multi metal. Thank you very much again for attending this uh, webinar. With that, I'm turning back to Jason uh, and uh, very happy to answer any question. Thank you, Hang. That was a great presentation. Um, we, we do have a, a few minutes uh, for some questions. Um, there were a number of them that were submitted. Uh, first, before we get into that, just want to let everybody know that uh, this webinar um, will be archived on our, on our website, so it will be available um, later for a replay if there was something that you wanted to, to um, look back on and, um, or something to get you want more some clarification. Um, there's also plenty of other applications available on our website. Um, product brochures and so forth that are associated with the, the products that we've, we've discussed today. Um, so um, with that, I'll, I'll start. So one of the first questions I'll, is um, you talked a little bit about um, you know, in-plane measurements and through-plane measurements. Um, is that, could you discuss um, the necessity or, or why it's necessary to measure diffusivity and conductivity um, in different directions? Why is that important? Yeah, because uh, as we said, uh, uh, there's an anisotropic, uh, which means there's a different uh, thermal conductivity in through plane in a in a through plane. So we need to know, and also a lot of uh, 
uh, application in industry, particular electronic, uh, they just use uh, the, this uh, uh, property uh, to for the thermal management. Yeah, so we have they need to know both um, direction. Thermal conducting in the uh, in plane and uh, through plane, yeah, and also for like a, a regular uh, polymer, uh, like a fiber reinforced uh, composite material, uh, even with the thickness of a, a over one millimeter, uh, two millimeter that range, and uh, the sample I show uh, here like a. Yeah, this one is uh, like a, a 20, 30 micron millimeter in thickness. That particular uh, have been used in everybody's uh, cell phone right now, other heat spreader. Yeah, it's kind of passive uh, heat dissipation, and that's just uh, make our cell phone lighter, much lighter. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um... We'll jump into another question here. Um, so what what would be the best uh, piece of equipment to measure the thermal conductivity of a polymer um, from, let's say, ambient temperature up to the, the temperature which the material softens, so the glass transition or the melting temperature? What 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 would your, be your advice in that, that instance? Yeah, based on uh, uh, for the polymer, because the polymer have the low melting point, uh, we will say like a DTC 300 uh, is just a good fit for this application. We have melting uh, the, the cell for the polymer uh, melts through the um, to melt. Yeah, so uh, because of the limited time, we didn't show that picture, but uh, we have some application on that, just uh, all the way up to. Uh, the melting point and even measure thermal conductivity during the melting, after melting, yeah. And uh, the, the design is similar to the picture on the, for the uh, paste in the liquid cell, uh, but with some uh, like an internal ring made of a ceramic uh, that for higher temperature, yeah, so. Okay. Um, so a, a similar question, a question along the same lines, I guess, it is, if if there's only a need to measure the materials around room temperature, uh, which which technique would be the best option? Uh, depend on the temperature, um, you already said the room temperature, um, depend on the thermal conductivity range. For the low and the medium, that we will recommend just uh, uh, steady state method, such as uh, DTC 300 and force 50 because it's easy to get conductivity directly. Um, different, uh, that will be a different way by flush that we talk about, uh, we have no specific heat in the density, yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, oh, okay, go ahead. Sure, thanks, thanks, Hung. Um, okay, so uh, I, I feel like we're kind of in the same theme here, but you know, if, if you wanted to measure the thermal conductivity of a, a, a let's say, a water-based thermoset polymer, um, which has some amount of solids in it, um, would that be the DTC as well? Yeah, for polymer, say you have solid in you know, some field uh, particle inside, that's kind of composite. And uh, uh, that's a good uh, application for DTC 300, or dependent temperature and also uh, Fox 50 as well, yeah. Okay. And also, look, we think about uh, the sample size, uh, you have large size that is uh, more representative for your application. And that, it, like uh, we comparison, we, we made a comparison between the transient method and the static state method, that gave you effective thermal conductivity, just uh, across, based on the sample drop across your sample. That's a different. If you for the flash diffusivity for the composite material, and then you you will get like a kind of appearance thermal diffusivity, and then you have to uh, combine with the specific heat and density to get a con conductivity, which is not exactly like an effective thermal conductivity obtained by steady state method. Yeah, there's some discussion about that, 
And always for the composite the heterogeneous, the best solution because the temperature range, it just go to the steady state method. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Um, and uh, there's actually a follow-up question uh, with that type of system, um, a curing system. Um, would there be any way to track the, the thermal conductivity of that material as it goes through the, the a curing a, a curing reaction? Uh, just during the testing. Yeah, I understand. Uh, for the probably dependent temperature range, uh, we, for the steady state method, the false 50, have the just all the data recording during the test at the time, you know, what's the time. So you always know the thermal conductivity changing at the time and also temperature. So that's kind of you have you can monitor cure, curing your material of your material, and uh, we recently uh, responding to the uh, customer uh, uh, inquiry. We add some uh, software to make uh, the flash system uh, with the function of uh, showing, displaying, recording thermal diffusivity at the time being at a different temperature, even at the same equilibrium temperature. Yeah, definitely we can do so, yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, so uh, with that, I, unfortunately, I think we're gonna bring the question and answer session to a close. Um, I, I, I know there, was, there were a, a few questions that we weren't able to get to, um, and we will certainly uh, respond back to you um, in the next uh, day or so uh, and try to get you an answer or just to get, maybe just to get some clarification um, on some of the, the questions that were there. Um, so um, with that, I, I certainly wanna thank everybody for their attendance today. I certainly appreciate um, you joining us today for this webinar. Um, and uh, you know, like I said, you know, make sure to, to check out our website for this archived webinar, as well as other applications notes and, and webinars that, that, our, um, you know, that, that TA has been hosting. So um, we look forward to, um, for, uh, Look forward to you joining us again in the future. So thank you very much, everybody. Thank you very much, everybody.